Hey there friends, in this video we're walking through hyperkalemia or high potassium levels. We will break it down step by step and make sure that you know the pathophysiology, what is happening inside the body that could be causing hyperkalemia. Fully understanding the patho of this is the foundation for critical thinking through hyperkalemia. Now you want to be able to apply what you are learning for your nursing school exams. So don't worry, we will walk you through through that step by step. You will also learn the signs and symptoms and nursing interventions of hyperkalemia as well, and you will finally understand the critical thinking behind it all. We all know your nursing exam is not going to test you on how well you memorize things, right? They want to know how well you apply the information that you're learning and how well you critically think about it. Think like a nurse, right? That's why we're breaking down hyperkalemia down step by step so that you can do that, you can critically think about it. And of course, I have a free cheat sheet to help you learn things faster and critically think better in nursing school. So be sure to stay until the end of the video and I will let you know where you can snag that. Now hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. All right, so potassium is a really important electrolyte to know about. Yes, that's why we are talking about it, right? Of course it's important, but really it is so important and you will be tested on it over and over and over again. <laughs> potassium plays a big role in the body and there are two key things that potassium affects, muscle contraction and it keeps the heart pumping. So keep those two things in mind as we dive into what could be causing hyperkalemia and the pathophysiology behind it all. But before we dive deep into the patho of hyperkalemia, let's talk really quick about the normal potassium levels. Now, normal potassium range is between 3.5 5 to 5 mil equivalents per liter. Hyperkalemia happens if that value gets above 5. Now the normal range is very small and it's really important that the potassium level in the body stays within that range and stays stable. It's also su super important to know that potassium has a big effect on the heart. And so any swing of potassium either way, you must be checking for cardiac symptoms and especially watching their cardiac conduction through an ECG. Now we'll talk more about this later on in the video. So just keep that in mind as we go. So again, when you think of potassium, think muscle contraction, specifically the heart and stable levels. It helps the muscles function and it needs to remain as stable as possible within the body. Now, what can cause a shift in potassium levels, specifically hyperkalemia or a potassium level greater than five? Now let's dive in and break down what might cause hyperkalemia and the pathophysiology behind it step by step. Because you know, <laughs> your nursing exam will not ask for a list of reasons why your patient could have hyperkalemia. No. They want to know that you can apply the information about what could be causing hyperkalemia. They want you to be able to critically think about what is going on. So let's do just that. Now, hyperkalemia can be caused by excessive intake of high potassium foods or medications, use of potassium sparing diuretics, issues with the kidneys, adrenal insufficiency, or movement of potassium across cell membranes. Now there's our list of what could cause hyperkalemia, but let's dive deep into the patho and critically think about why these can cause hyperkalemia. Now we'll go through each one of these step by step so you're sure to know exactly what is happening inside the body that could result in hyperkalemia. So obviously if the patient eats a whole lot of potassium, their potassium level is going to increase, right? This could be foods high in potassium, potassium chloride, medications, and salt substitutes. Now if a patient is taking potassium supplements, obviously their potassium level will increase. And salt substitutes Substitutes are very high in potassium. So for example, your patient with a cardiac disorder who we told don't eat too much salt, well, they went and bought a whole lot of salt substitute to put in their food, right? <laughs> happens all the time. Well, salt substitute is really high in potassium, so you'll need to be aware of that and do some education 
with your patient about that. They just can't have too much or could increase their potassium level. Now, potassium sparing diuretics are important as well. Now, these diuretics will get rid of sodium and water, but they hold on to potassium. So if your patient is taking them for a while, their potassium level might increase. So that's why I always say it is super important to be checking all of their electrolytes if your patient is on a diuretic because it can cause those swings really in electrolyte levels, especially potassium. Now let's talk about kidney issues and adrenal insufficiency. Now the kidneys are imperative to regulating electrolytes in the body and basically everything else. It's the kidney's job to balance out all those electrolytes and keep them within a normal range. Kidneys are so important. So let's do some critical, critical thinking here. Now, if the kidneys are damaged and they're not functioning, what do you think is gonna happen to the potassium level? Is it gonna increase or decrease? Well, if the kidneys aren't functioning to make urine and move those electrolytes out of the body, those electrolytes are going to stay in the body. So they're going to increase in the body. So with kidney issues or kidney failure, the potassium level might increase. And adrenal insufficiency is another critical thinking exercise that we need to walk through. The adrenal glands are in charge of releasing aldosterone. And what is aldosterone's job? Well, it has three main jobs. It tells the kidneys to hold on to sodium, hold on to water, and to get rid of potassium. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> There's that potassium. So normally the adrenal glands release aldosterone, which helps the body to get rid of excess potassium. But during adrenal insufficiency, the adrenal glands aren't making as much aldosterone. So what do you think is going to happen? The potassium level is going to increase because there's just not as much aldosterone there to tell the kidneys to get rid of potassium. One big disorder where adrenal insufficiency is present is Addison's disease. Now during Addison's disease, the adrenal glands aren't functioning properly to prevent produce that aldosterone so the potassium level might increase. Now we have a whole video series on Addison's disease inside of our nursing SOS membership community. So if you want more of a deep dive on that, be sure to check it out. And finally, let's talk about how the movement of potassium can cause hyperkalemia. Now potassium loves to hang out inside the cell. It's a little homebody. It likes to be inside its little cell. But there are a few things that can cause it to leave the cell and move outside. These are things like acidosis, burns, and cell breakdown. So when the body is acidic, potassium will move out of its cell to try to balance out that acidity. It comes out to try and help. Now the same thing with burns. During a burn or another injury, potassium potassium will leave the cell to try to balance out the electrolytes. And of course, during cell damage, tissue trauma, that cell could rupture and all the potassium is going to leak out of the cell, which can also cause hyperkalemia. Because now all of that potassium that's supposed to be inside of the cell is now outside of the cell, which increases that serum potassium level. Alrighty. Now let's jump right into the many signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia that you have to know about. Now, we know that the role potassium plays in the body. Now there's two key things I want you to keep in mind. Potassium helps muscles contract and it keeps the heart pumping. Now remembering these two things is going to make learning these signs and symptoms a whole lot easier. <laughs> a whole lot. So the signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia, let's list them out. Potassium level greater than five milliequivalents per liter, cardiac arrhythmias, decreased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, muscle twitching and cramping in the early stages, diarrhea, flaccid muscles, and respiratory depression then in the late stages. Now the ECG may also show flatter P waves, the PR interval may be longer, and the QRS inner complex might be wider and the T wave might be taller. Now, I just gave you a big list of symptoms. Now, do you really think that your nursing school exam is going to ask you to write down the symptoms of hyperkalemia? 
No, they are not, my friend. <laughs> They're not going to do that. They will want you to apply the pathophysiology of what is happening inside the body to those signs and symptoms. Now, they want you to, of course, be critically thinking about everything that you're learning. So let's walk through the critical thinking behind all the signs and symptoms. Now, let's start with the heart. Like we said, potassium plays a huge role in regulating the heart. It keeps it pumping, keeps it regulating the electrical system. So when there's too much potassium, there's too much stimulus on the heart. So the heart is trying to stay consistent in pumping, but there's so much potassium that it's sending more and more and more and more impulses, telling the heart's electrical system to fire more and more and more and more. Now this leads to cardiac arrhythmias. That potassium is causing the heart's electrical system to fire and fire and fire and fire and fire, and the heart gets confused, and this can lead to irregular heartbeats. Now, as that potassium keeps pushing the heart to work harder and harder, the heart gets tired and weaker and slower. So this leads to that weak pulse, and therefore decreased blood pressure, because the heart can't get that blood out, right? So that's just the first role that potassium plays, that first set of signs and symptoms. Potassium helps to regulate the heart's electrical system. So when there's too much potassium, it causes so much stimulus on the heart, which then leads to cardiac arrhythmias and the heart saying, um, I can't keep up with all of this potassium. So it slows down, gets weaker, which causes that blood pressure to drop. Now, the second role of potassium that we'll talk about is muscle contraction. Now, this is very similar to what is happening with the heart. Now, when there's too much potassium, there is too much stimuli on those muscles, which can cause them to twitch or cramp up. Now, there's so much stimuli on those muscles. All of that potassium is causing them to fire and fire and fire, and they twitch and they cramp. And because the GI system is a muscle, it will cause that GI sim system to work harder and be hyperactive. This can lead to diarrhea. And now as time goes on and the potassium level stays increased, those muscles will just say, eh, I've had enough and they'll stop working they'll go numb and weak. So later on in hyperkalemia, the muscles can give out. They go flaccid. So the muscles in the arms and legs might be weaker or flaccid. Now, here's the key that you need to know. The diaphragm is also a muscle. So when the muscles give out, so does the diaphragm. And the diaphragm helps you to breathe. So when those muscles give out, it can cause respiratory depression and failure because the muscles just can't keep the breathing up anymore. Now let's talk about those ECG changes. When you look at the patient's cardiac monitor, remember you've gotta be monitoring that. You may see flatter P waves, the PR interval may be longer, the QRS complex might be wider, and the T waves may be taller. So compared to a normal ECG, those are the changes that you can expect to see in hyperkalemia. And now that we are confident in the patho and the signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia, let's dive into the type of nursing interventions and assessments that you will do as the nurse. Now, these are important. <laughs> these are topics that your nursing exams will definitely cover all the time. And they really want to make sure that you are critically thinking about it obviously and able to apply what you're learning. So don't worry, we're gonna break it all down for you into three major categories, monitor, reverse, and prevent. That's what you'll do for your nursing interventions for hyperkalemia. Now remember, we've talked about how with hyperkalemia, you want to be sure that you are keeping a good eye on your patient's heart and how it is functioning. So what does this mean? Well, your patient should be on a cardiac monitor since hyperkalemia can cause life threatening cardiac arrhythmias. This is super important. This will help you monitor their heart closely. You'll also need to regularly assess their potassium level to make sure that it's decreasing or staying stable and not increasing more. Remember, we want their potassium level to stay between 3.5 and 5 and remain stable. We don't want any big shifts one way or the other. Of course, you'll need to monitor their heart rate, 
blood pressure, their neuromuscular status to look for that muscle twitching, that cramping or paralysis, monitor them for GI upset, and check their respiratory status. So that is what you will monitor. Now, let's talk about what we will reverse. <laughs> Let's think. We want to reverse the problem, right? Which is hyperkalemia. So we want to get rid of the excess potassium inside their body. Now, of course, you'll need to go off what their doctor orders, but you might discontinue any potassium supplements if that's what's ordered, including any IVs they're getting that contain potassium. And you might give medications like potassium excreting diuretics, k glucose or insulin to try to reduce that potassium level. And they may also need dialysis to rebalance those electrolytes. Now, we've talked about what we will monitor and reverse, but we also want to prevent this from happening again. So you'll need to encourage your patient to follow their prescribed diet plan, which will most likely be a low potassium diet, but be aware of those salt substitutes that are high in potassium. So those should be avoided. You'll need to educate your patient on the signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia so they know what to look for and help them seek medical care early if they experience any of those symptoms that we talked about earlier on. Cardiac symptoms, muscle twitching, GI upset, or respiratory depression specifically. So remember, monitor, reverse, and prevent. Now, there are three ways that I can help you more through nursing school if you need. Number one, download this free cheat sheet to help learning things faster in nursing school make it way easier for you and to be able to critically think better because like we said that is what your nursing school exams are going to test you on now if you want more help through nursing school check out our nursing school boxes that we have available for you they're packed with resources to help you succeed in nursing school you are going to love them and of course if you want me to hold your hand throughout your nursing school journey I am absolutely here for it. Don't miss out on joining the Nursing SOS membership community. It's filled with step-by-step -step nursing lectures to help you understand everything faster so you'll be more prepared for your nursing school exams and your clinicals. Now, the links to all of those resources are down below in the description. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below to let me know that you loved it, share it with one of your nursing school friends, and of course, click subscribe and click on that notification bell so you never miss a video and click on one of these videos here so you can keep rocking nursing school and as always my friend go become the nurse that god created only you to be and i'll catch you next time on the nursing school show take care bye bye